Hello guys, welcome. This is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. Now in this tutorial, we are going to set up our Einstein bot. So the first thing is if you scroll down on this page, we are under the Einstein bots here. And if you scroll down, you see a button to create a new bot. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now it is asking you for the type of bot. So we will go ahead and use a standard bot. We don't want enhanced bot yet at this time. We'll go with the standard bot, hit the next here. And then it is asking you a type of the bot. We will start from scratch. We don't want to use a intro template because intro template means you have a template of setting up the bot. We will start from scratch. That way we'll know what all steps are involved in setting up a bot. So we'll use this option, hit the next here. And now it is asking you for your bot's name and whatever you will type in here, it will appear on this left hand side screen. So let's say my bot name is Alexa. So what will happen is this is the message it's going to give. Hi, I'm Alexa, a digital assistant. And if you want to change it from Alexa to Alex, this is how if you change it, this is how it will reflect. So we'll change it to Alexa. What language will your bot use? There are multiple options. We will stick with English. Hit next here. Now the welcome message. So anytime the user clicks on the chat option, what is the first message user is going to see? It's going to see, hi, I am Alexa, a digital assistant. I am here to answer your queries. Let's say this is the first message that Alexa will show. The bot will show basically. And what are the top actions your customers want to take? So now this is the main menu. And as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, we will have two menu items. One is to create a new case. And the second one is to check your case status. So the first option is create a new case. And moment you do that, you can see here this button appears and similarly check my case status. This is the second menu item. And these are the only two menu items we will set up and we will have a lot of questions. The bot is going to ask, create a new case and bot is going to ask another set of questions for check my case status. So next here, and then we will leave this as it is and hit the next, click on proceed and then finish. So this is our first bot that we are creating. If you have to make any changes onto this Einstein bot, you have to make sure that your bot is not active. The moment you activate it, you won't be able to make any changes. So anytime you have to make any changes, you have to first deactivate your bot. You cannot edit anything if your bot is in the active status. So let's say on the left hand side, you see your menu items, create a new case and check my case status. Now what happens when somebody clicks on create a new case? Now let's say whenever somebody clicks on create a new case, you want your bot to ask couple of questions from your customers. Questions like, what is your first name? What is your last name? What is your phone number? What is your company? All this information is required in order to create a case, let's say what is your case description? So these are a couple of questions the bot is going to ask and then your customer is going to respond. Okay, so you can add whatever different types of components onto this bot. You can have messages configured, you can have questions configured, you can invoke an Epix class, you can invoke an external service, you can invoke a flow, you can do all that through this bot. So the first thing is I'm going to ask a static question. And what is the question? I'm going to say, enter your first name. And then once it enters your first name, what is the expected response format? Now it should be a text format, right? Because the answer should not be a number. So expected text format is text here. Response format is text. Then how to save the response? save answer to a variable. So whatever customer is going to answer, we want to store that in a variable so that we can use that variable when we are creating a case. So here, select a variable, I'm going to choose new text variable and the variable name is called as first name and this is the API name. Using the API name, you can reference your variables inside of messages. We will see that in a minute. Hit the save here. So now this is the first question. Let's go ahead and hit the save. Now, once you have done all of that, let's go ahead and 
activate it and before we activate it there is one more thing i want to do because our bot is going to invoke a flow our bot is going to invoke an apex class we want our bot to have the maximum privileges so in order to give that maximum privileges we have to first go under overview here so i all i did is i clicked on this drop down i was in the dialog section now i came back over to the overview section here so we'll click on overview and then we will scroll down currently the bot user is a basic chat bot user which has very less privileges so what will happen is if you're running your user as a basic chat bot user it won't have the permission to invoke a flow or to invoke an apex class and we want all those permissions to be given so what i'll do is i'll edit this and i'll change it to custom chat bot user and what is the custom chatbot user dipika is the custom chatbot user so your bot is going to run as this user and i am a system admin so i have all the privileges i need okay now we will go ahead and go back to dialogs again and we have only configured one question so far which is enter your first name now we will activate our bot and let's preview it okay now let's preview it as rich content preview and uh, this is the first thing it will say is first we need to set up the chat and uh, it's going to give you an error that's okay what will happen is click on start button create a chat queue so you have to create a chat queue first means if any kind of messages come they will be stored in a queue what is the name of the queue we are going to give web support as the name of the queue name this group we can call it as uh, bot enabled group let's say that is the name and the users is part of this group is dipika let's say this is the user we have and uh, you'll select that user and hit next here now work item size is 5 adjust your agent's chat workload is basically anything like we setting up a chat here now website url tell us where you want to put chat on your website be sure to include a protocol so let's say we want to include this chat on my website with the name is mytutorialrack.com let's say salesforce site domain we will go ahead and provide mytutorialrack here as well and then i have read the terms and conditions and hit the next here already taken we'll add number 2 here and then chat with the customers again what is your type link chats with other objects in salesforce to give you a full view of your chat visitors so my chat is of service type right because what will happen is it will help me create cases contacts things like that so i'm going to choose service from the list here now if you are going to work with leads and stuff then you can choose the first option since my chatbot is to create a new case and check the case status so i'm going to use the service here next and offline support we have disabling it hit next here and we are just finishing up and this is your chat code snippet so if you have a wordpress site or any kind of site or even a salesforce site you can add this code anywhere onto your site and that chat button will be enabled over there and your chatbot will be active so this is the code that you have to use on your site and don't worry you don't have to copy it you can always find this code in from the embedded deployments and we'll see that in a minute but let's go ahead and hit next here and then done so now we have set up our chat so first we created our einstein bot right now it only ask you one question is enter your first name and then we set up our chat now chat with an expert the first thing it will give you is a form okay this is the form and we will disable this form also but let's just do a start chatting agent is on the way and then it is asking you the first thing hi i am alexa a digital assistant i am here to answer your queries that is the first message we asked right and now when somebody clicks on create a new case now assume this is the bot alexa is the bot and i am the customer so customer is going to choose this option create a new case when customer chooses create a new case the first question alexa is asking is enter your first name and whatever the customer is entering let's say i entered dipika now dipika would be able to store in that variable now if you want your chatbot 
to ask other set of questions we will configure all of those you're going to have a full blown bot created and we'll continue this discussion from the next tutorial so stay tuned for that thank you very much